And now, authors, writers, books, and beyond. This program also streams live on the web at tspntv.com and can be watched on demand at tspntv.com or TSPN TV's YouTube channel. And now, authors, writers, books, and beyond. Hi. Welcome to the April Authors, Writers, Books, and Beyond TV show. I'm your hostess, Kathy Boyd Fuller, and I am really excited today to have as my guest Manzanita Writers Press. It's a local press here in Calaveras County. Um, I'm personally um, how should I say prejudiced <laughs> because I used to be on the board with them and so it's a, a wonderful press for local books and they have some really exciting things to share with you today about a fundraiser and a preview for their next book so I'm going to start introducing starting on my left here this is Connie Strawbridge thank Hi, you Kathy. Connie thank, thank you, you, thank you for coming thank you for and Linda me. Field it's a pleasure to be who here. used to do the um, Manzanita Press radio show mm -hmm. And editor and founder, Monica Rose. Thank you for coming, ladies. And Wonderful. we're just going to jump right in and get a couple things out. First of all, is their exciting fundraiser? And I'm going to turn this over to Connie for that. Okay. Uh, well, we have a big plan for a fundraiser at the Hotel Ege in McCombie Hill. And it's on June 6th from 5.30 on. And it's a dinner dance fundraiser to benefit um, Manzanita Press and to help us in the production of our wine, cheese, and chocolate anthology. And it's featuring Contamos, which is a wonderful um, local band. They're from Murphy's, and Michaela McFarlane is a well-known soprano singer, and um, she sings in five languages, wow. and very, uh, the music ranges from old folk rock to uh, salsa and lots of Latin rhythms. Mm -hmm. It's really going to be a really fun dance, fun to dance, dance to. party. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like Dancing with the Stars. It <laughs> is, kind of, except for free form, right? And then um, we have a great dinner. It's going to be chicken marsala with um, vegetables and all the fixings, bread, and uh, we'll have a silent auction that will benefit the press with all kinds of art and wine and cheese and anything you can think of. It'll be great. And are you taking donations for that? We are taking donations. You can call or email the press. You could call um, 890-3922 and a make a pledge, a donation, and we'll send you a form. It's tax deductible. It's and area code 209. Area right? code 209, right. Uh -huh. And then are you looking for um, donations, books, um, framed art, local wines? Absolutely. For the silent auction? Yeah. Anything else other than that, or are you kind of keeping it in, within that theme? Um, we, could have, we could have other things of uh, value um, that uh, would work in a silent auction. You could, if you have a really nice face at home that is beautiful and it's in great shape and you want to donate it, that's great. Um, experiences, uh, vacations. Um, so local, local uh, owners, shop owners could also donate. They oh, could. Perfect. Okay. Right, exactly. Yeah. Lots of those out there in New TV land. Yeah. You guys remember that. It's For a sure. good cause. And the dance is held in the ballroom at the hotel. Yes, Hoche? that's correct. And the whole the whole hotel would be open to everyone. Um, the backyard is open. It's a beautiful garden area. The hotel was uh, refurbished on um, Hotel Impossible just about not even two years ago. And uh, the whole lobby is a mural. It was yeah. painted by... Uh, Lori and Pete Kelly and a group of volunteers. It's beautiful and worth taking a trip to the hotel j just to see that. And so they can go down the stairs in the back to the seating area down there where exactly a lot yeah. of people will be this weekend for Antoinette May's um, Writers Conference. Exactly. Mm -hmm. By the yeah. way, if you haven't signed up for that, you can show up at the door on uh, Saturday morning. Terrific. And get a little preview of the hotel for this event. Exactly. And also the wine cellar. Um, the old jail is now oh. the wine cellar. And it's um, that's all open, too. It'll for be them open to, to the tour. public. Right. I've taken a workshop in there, folks. It's actually wonderful. It is. Nice and cool. It is cool. It's very yeah. nice and cool. And this is June, so we might need it to be cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. Just so you know, out there in TV land, I know you're feeling it, but it's hit 90 degrees today. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a nice air conditioner going for us tonight, and I'm very grateful to that for that. Um, and the, the hotel's air conditioned, right? They don't just have fans. The ballroom is, isn't it? I'm trying to remember, mm, Monica. I, I can't tell I can't, for I sure. I can't remember. It stays pretty I'm cool. sure they it's have not, something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know they have yeah. the ceiling yeah. fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So come and be prepared to dance your little dancing shoes off. Um, mm -hmm. I have a couple out-of-town friends that have danced there, Nicola Trist and um, Genevieve Beltran. You know, you might want to yeah. check into this. And five languages? She's, she's she sings in at least five languages. And um, romance languages, basically. Mm -hmm. And just a beautiful trained voice and the, all of the players are really spectacular mm -hmm. so they make for a really nice uh, very professional experience yeah. there's a yeah. great sample online if you just uh, google Contamos and exactly. check out the yeah. music. It's it's yeah. really good. Are it they is. on YouTube? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. yeah they are. Lots of and, videos out there. Yeah. Yeah. And their website has um, actual uh, videos yeah. too. So. They're really well known in Calaveras County. Mm -hmm. They actually played for the Ovations series. Oh, right. I was just going to say uh, that Council. was the first time I yeah. heard them, and they were you were they impressed. Were fabulous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah really the really tickets good. tickets are really reasonable. Oh, okay. They are. They're only $45, and you get dinner, dancing, and the whole evening full of fun. Now, is that yeah. per person or couple? That's per, per person. person. Okay, per person. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, and uh, the chef is making his signature uh, he dessert. He is, that's bread right. Pudding He's with making chocolate. bread pudding, oh, which, bread will, pudding which will be featured in the book. Um, this isn't the page, but... See if I can find that page here. This is um, one of the chef's special spreads, which features the Murphy's Hotel, and um, it's a um, dark chocolate pudding with black cherry reduction, and <laughs> oh. it, it's a recipe for that. And we're going to have multiple spreads in the book with uh, hotels, and including the Hotel Leger. And, and camps has a, a nice and camps spread. has a nice spread, and there'll be a few more before we're finished. Mm -hmm. And and the the special dessert is a special bread pudding that has all kinds of good stuff in it, more than just bread pudding. Mm -hmm. so, so is it more of a traditional bread pudding with a twist, or oh. um, maybe a little? With a twist, yeah. I with would a twist, say. I think yes. I've actually had it. There. Yeah, oh. it has. I think it's a. It has some. Um, it has some ber berries in it too, some mm. kind of a berry topping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's fresh. So you can yeah. Yeah. eat yeah. your nice, lovely meal, burn mm -hmm. off your food, and dance. That's, That's right. right. That's and exactly. help a good cause. Help us launch this book. And, and can you explain yeah. exactly the purpose for the fundraiser launch? Is to support the wine, cheese, and chocolate book? It is mm -hmm. to support the um, Manzanita Press, but also to help with the publishing of the wine, cheese, and chocolate yeah. book. And uh, to get it out there, we intend to have it out there by fall. By mm -hmm. fall or late late summer, and then the day fall. after uh -huh. the dance, you have uh -huh. the preview. No, it's the same. We we're going to have the preview that night. That's right. Oh, yeah. and then we're yeah. we're going to have the launch and all the activities and the workshops coming um, in the fall when oh, we launch okay. the book. There'll be a preview, a uh, pre uh, pre print of the pages. And on Some the of evening the of the dance. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. just one evening, not two. Right, that's right. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, exactly. Okay, so, and when, yeah. how late do they stay open? Oh, they stay mm -hmm. open pretty late. Um, I think at one o'clock in the morning or so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and is usually it early is a fun place for be. people to still get reservations? Oh, I know they fill up yeah, fast. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the the cocktail hour we have that at five thirty. Five thirty. So yes. you know uh -huh. we yeah. we do want to you know get some numbers pretty soon so we can um, exactly. get the chef ready and. So. And yeah, what is limited. the number or website to which all responses for this go? Well, we're at, at www. Uh, Manzapress. Com. Can so you spell it out for them? www. M A N Z A Press. Com. And if you'd, if you'd like to get tickets, they're available at the Hotel Lachey, the Calaveras Arts Council, uh, the Visitors Bureau, the Calaveras Visitors Bureau in Angel's Camp, and at Sustenance Books in Murphy's. And Hein. And Hein, Hein and Company, Company yeah. which is right next door to the studio here. And Hotel, and Hotel Lachey. And Jackson and the Hotel Lachey. 
Yeah. yeah. And, um, or you could call the number that I gave earlier, which is 209-890-3922, and we'll take your reservation over the telephone. Okay, so you have lots of ways to yeah. be sure you get your tickets um, in advance. Will they be at the door, or can you possibly be selling them? Uh, there may be a few at the door, but, the, but it's limited seating, yeah. so you should order them soon. Okay. For so sure. So keep that in yeah. mind. Yes. And um, if you haven't been to the hotel yet, uh, you've done a lot of functions there, and mm -hmm. Antoinette does a lot of functions there. Mm -hmm. There is more than even Connie's mentioning for you to see there. Oh, yeah. It's a wonderful yes. hotel. And it's, it's a beautiful. It's um, uh, it has its own ghost. In yes. fact, we did have an experience with one while we were dining you there. Did, My did husband you? did. Yes, oh, yeah. but a hand on his shoulder. And uh, there was no one around, and he asked, uh, was there a man standing behind me? And he said, no. <laughs> he said, five minutes ago, there was a hand on my shoulder. I'm said, sure it was a friendly yeah. ghost. Though. It was a friendly ghost. Oh. He said he was not concerned. He just wanted to know whether there was someone. Wow. So you have a lot of things to take into account. <laughs> be, sh be sure you come back and join us so you can hear the rest of it. And um, there's more than uh, what Monica was sharing for you to have a view of uh, the streets. You can walk if you spend oh, the night. And if you're town. dancing all night and eating and drinking, you might want to spend the night. Mm -hmm. Beautiful walk around town there that is, um, this time of year, everything's in bloom. It bloomed early. And so come back and we'll tell you more. You're watching your local television network, TSPN. From you're watching your local television network, TSPN, and now back to authors, writers, books, and beyond. This program also streams live on the web at TSPNTV.com and can be watched on demand at TSPNTV.com or TSPN TV's YouTube channel. And now back to authors, writers, books, and beyond. Hi, welcome back. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. For those of us that are just joining us for the first time, this is um, Manzanita Writers Press. Um, as my guest today, Monica Rose, Linda Field, and Connie Strawbridge. And you just missed Connie's wonderful sharing on their fundraiser in June. We'll cover it again before we close. Stay with us while Monica, the editor of the press, is going to talk about the launch of their wine, cheese, and chocolate book. Take it away, Monica. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you've seen the cover. This is the front and this is the back. It's a beautiful uh, cover uh, photograph by uh, Dino Rivera from Valley Springs. And what he's got there is um, just a nice little array. And never mind that that's champagne. I, we thought that would work anyway with our wine, cheese, and chocolate. So anyway, it's a lovely um, array. And then we've got a... Uh, title page with wine, cheese, and chocolate theme. And uh, this one was by uh, Carrie Weber Povens. There we go. You see that? And it's very lovely. And she was actually a contest winner for her artwork and very um, exciting. Uh, very classy. Yeah, yeah. And um, we have, uh, Connie mentioned various spreads that we've got. She's very artistic. She's very um, modest too, but she's a great graphic designer, and she's doing the layouts, um, the layouts for the entire magazine, and all of these the graphics that go in it. There and so go. this is um, there we go. Yeah, she's already shown this one, um, and this is the Murphy's uh, Hotel recipe spread. And so we've got several pages with these specialty spreads. We're going to have a pairing with uh, the uh, Cheese Lady in Lodi with some uh, wineries there as well. And we're hoping to have chocolatiers and cheese people up here doing some pairing and some grocery stores and whatever, coming up with maybe an article or two and uh, adding that in. We're still getting our uh, some of our material in because as we... Um, are getting our sponsors and uh, advertisers, we're finding that there's material out there that we can add. So uh, we don't want to get too huge, but we're at about 168 pages. And these are color, full color pages all the way through. And um, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, then this is what the layout kind of looks like. It's Connie's done a, she's done a very nice job. If you have seen poetry now, it's laid out. It's very simple, but very elegant. And uh, so that will be um, that will be wonderful. And 
uh, some of the, the um, wineries and the businesses who are sponsoring are actually uh, part of our uh, artistic uh, spread. So they're part of the artistic element. And they're beautiful, you know, how some of the wineries have just beautiful photography. So um, we urge people to, you know, if they'd like to be a part of this and you have some great photography and artistic work, we'd love to see you um, contact us on that so you can be in the book. We're going to print a few thousand copies. We're not sure yet, at least four or five thousand copies, possibly more. So um, it's going to be a, a really good um, distribution, and we're with Small Press Distribution out of Berkeley, so we are national as well as um, distributing throughout our state and our region. A lot of local writers, um, although we do have some writers from about 22 states of the United States. So we have um, no foreign um, representatives, but uh, a lot of Californians and many, many from our uh, three-county area up in our region. Um, so in the production of the book, I'm just um, just dazzled by the content. It's beautiful. Yeah. There's lots of great photography mm -hmm. and really, really good writing. This uh, area really inspires it, yeah. I think. Local, local yeah. photographers and yeah. artists, and uh, we still have a little bit of room. We could use a little more photography and art. So we could. if there's anyone yeah. out there that uh, you've got some artwork and it's wine, cheese, and chocolate related, uh, let Connie know. Send it to us, and we'll, we'll take a look at it and see if it'll fit in in the spread. So. And out there in TV land, what's your deadline? Our deadline as soon as possible, ASAP. It's been like I this. Think, yes. Yeah, we, yeah. I think the deadline would be uh, the third week in May at yeah. the very, the drop dead deadline. Okay, Let's so put it May 21st. Right. Right. Yes. And, and uh -huh. I have a photograph going in, folks, so don't think yes. you can't uh, <laughs> work that out. Uh, That's right. Be a little creative. Mix mm -hmm. up your wine, cheese, and chocolate, mm -hmm. and they have some really classic photos that are already going in. Mm -hmm. But May 21st is your deadline, artists and photographers. Yeah. Don't forget yeah. that. And we are uh, getting a small excerpt uh, from um, the new book coming out by, hopefully coming out this year, if, if it's, you know, uh, by um, Antoinette May. She's putting a little oh, excerpt fantastic. from uh, Mary's yeah. Monsters in there. So we're excited about that. <laughs> that's so we're waiting to see exciting. what that's going yeah. to look like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we've, we've had a good track record of um, publishing, I think. Um, last few years we've we've published several books one of them is not in this array by Dave Self but we like to publish our local writers and and the way our press works is um, we have a writers group that meets every second and fourth Monday and what we like to do is workshop the manuscripts if possible and and uh, people get you know assistance with their with their work and then um, compile their collection, if it's a collection of short stories or poetry, and produce that for them um, with assistance. So our goal is to get more grants, get more uh, sponsors, and, and have memberships in the press where these authors can have their costs afraid because it's very, very expensive for them to promote, to, you know, to have their uh, publications printed. And since we're a nonprofit, um, we really, you know, this is a labor of love. We really don't make a lot of money from this, but it's it's important. But to it's us. not limited to people that go to Writers Unlimited. People no, 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 can no. submit. Yeah. You do not have to go right. to that to correct, make a submission. Correct, correct. Exactly. It's just another option for people if they like some editing work. And our editorial team is very, very good. Joy Joy Roberts is not here, but she's fantastic she as is. an editor. Very much. Um, she zeroes in and, and cut to the quick, and, and you'll find out very, very soon how to fix that manuscript. So I'm going to say something real quick because. Um, I worked with SPD because I used to be their distribution for four years, three, three out of four years. Wonderful way when you go with this press to get in catalogs, they're online catalogs now, they used to not be, to give you extended exposure beyond, I don't want the people in the community to think, oh, it's just Calaveras Limited, not, it is not. They have a wide range of exposure. Um, you can look every one of these books up on Amazon. And you can maybe we should tell them what the books are. Yeah, actually, why doesn't everybody? Why don't you take yours too? Okay. And I'm gonna talk about one because okay. I helped okay. that and okay. righty, yeah. honey. There, our latest Let's one. Start is with chance. start with chance. chance. Yeah. yeah, the latest one that we just put out <laughs> is Chance, and it's a Jockey's Odyssey, and it's by uh, Franklin Ted Laskin. And he's we've done two collections by him, a short story collection, and this is um, not only about Chance, who had a 
an accident, as a, a racing accident, uh, but um, which kind of brought the, you know, the the biography to a, a ran to a different um, avenue. So he had hoped that um, he would continue his career, and it was this tragedy that occurred. And he uh, not only writes about chance, but about the venues and the in the racing circuit across California. So if you've ever been to um, to races at, at county fairs, he he documents all of the different races and the different venues throughout California, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, and it's a humorously written, very witty, uh, very uh, sassy, sophisticated. Um, Ted, Ted's a great writer. And so um, that was, that was uh, our most recent book. I mean, we're, it doesn't really have anything to do with the Mother Load or Sierra, but you know, we're, the, that kind of shows our eclectic um, nature. Can mm -hmm. you flip it around and get, let them have a look show at Ted? Oh, the back? Oh, that's oh, a great Ted, photo. Ted with the mules. I, I, before I, we edited this book, we didn't even realize that mules raced, you know. Learn something new. Book. I know, mule yeah. racing, and, and he, this is his favorite, so. And that's his uh, Custer. George Custer, please come to the white courtesy phone. <laughs> and it really doesn't have much to do with Custer at all. We had a, a, a great time with that title. Um, <laughs> there is an essay on Custer, but other than that, it's really, there are many uh, humorous stories in there about the laws, or if you're a lawyer, or if you like <laughs> legal matters, hilarious stories, very, very good stories. I'm going to talk a little about the book that came out before Wine, Cheese, and Chocolate, Wild Edges, beautiful cover, amazing. This one had black and white, few color pictures inside, very vibrant and beautiful, wonderful prose. This was the um, prose and poetry of the Motherlode and Sierra, and it's the predecessor to Wine, Cheese, and Chocolate, which is a wonderful different theme. You can still get this book for $10. Mm -hmm. um, Clark's well, Corner, 15 15 Ooh, Clark's has it for a little bit less, um, it's and great. it's in various areas, not just through the catalogs through SPD and up here. You want to Hine, do running Hine and Company has them, has copies of them, and uh, go ahead Arts real Council. quick. And, we'll and this them. one is by one of my favorite writers, yeah. Glenn Wasson. Uh, his uh, his book is Tales Mark Twain Would Have Loved to Steal. And Glenn is a great humorist. Oh, so <laughs> funny. <laughs> he, really he embellishes uh, everything. Everything. Even, you know, even true stories he embellishes. And, 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 <laughs> and he is he's just a master of, uh, uh, if, you, if you want something, Humor. want to read something that will make you laugh, this one is it. And then Monica plays telepathy. And then this is um, my collection of poetry. Now, um, because I'm... Um, editor and you know publisher um, it's nice that uh, SPD has taken my book on as well even though this one was um, produced um, by Ron Pickup out of um, Sonora and so um, mine print um, was his review uh, years ago and it's um, Glen Hill publications and he's just a great publisher um, so it's a collection of poems pretty eclectic um, many of them about our area and uh -huh. nature and quirky little little poems. Yes, yeah, quite um, quirky, some of them. Yes. So is that on Kindle too? Monica? It is. This is oh, this. Yeah, yeah, you can get an ebook of this. In fact, the mm -hmm. photographs are not in color in this book because um, uh, the publisher is very expensive, but the ebook is all color, full color for the and photographs. You, most of these are available not just in print. Do you, you have ebooks? We'll talk about ebooks mm -hmm. when we come back because okay. we're running out of time. And I, I really encourage you to come back and learn a lot more. They have a lot more to share. You can find out about, they're going to read little excerpts when we come back and we'll dig a little bit more into the non print. So thank you for joining us and I look forward to your return. You're watching your local television network, TSPN. You're watching your local television network, TSPN, and now back to authors, writers, books, and beyond. This program also streams live on the web at TSPNTV.com and can be watched on demand at TSPNTV.com or TSPNTV's YouTube channel. And now back to authors, writers, books, and beyond. Hi, welcome back for the segment of Authors, Writers, Books, and Beyond. Again, I'm Kathy Boyd Fuller, your hostess. If you're just joining us with Manzanita Writers Press, fun stuff. We're going to talk a little bit first about the fun stuff next door at Hiding Company. Wonderful, wonderful, not just a bookstore. It is a wonderful place. It's kind of like a, for writers, a fantasy land, and for readers, a fantasy land. Two stories with a wonderful um, upstairs um, murder mystery theater. 
which they've already had their first scene. Um, you can walk through the shelves, and there's a wonderful local section where I know for sure this book is. Some of the others are too. And they have a steampunk section now. They have props for plays, vintage clothing, and vintage everything, cards, um, wonderful calendars. The entire, you know, Wolf Hine is there with his sons, Eric, that run it. Brian and Eric, and you can ask just about any question. My number one thing when I go to the front case is the rare books. Bought in several there. He will also try and find you anything that you are looking for that you don't see. So rare, new, used, you name it. They have videos, uh, the old, what were they called before VHS? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so here on Main Street in Jackson, right next door to the studio, um, be sure to come here. You can check out just about, and I would check on their next show upstairs. I'm not sure when it is. There are tables downstairs where you can hold writer critique meetings, any kind of workshop you want. Sarah Luck Pearson holds workshops there. We're back here, and we're going to talk a little about also my group meets at Clark's Corner in IOM. And so... A little downhill from here, uh, same thing. We do our annual literary read there. They have a beautiful platform stage with theater curtains. It's just phenomenal. Uh, new chef, Chris Martin, that has just created some fabulous dishes that are beyond anything they've ever had before. And they have a wonderful new manager working together with Chris, um, Amber, that have... Gosh, they're just taking it to new places. Mother's Day, you can take your mom there or go to uh, Howard Park. They are have that many reservations. You still can get some. So give Clark's a call. Uh, they are 274 CAFE, C-A-F-E. We're going to go right back now to Monica Rose, the editor of Manzanita Writing Press. And I want to ask you first, how long ago did you start the press? Oh, my goodness. Well, it started as Writers Unlimited, which is just a critique group, uh, writers getting together in 1984. Wow. 84. Time. 94. That's <laughs> so 20 something years. Long time. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Long time. And, um, and we evolved. We, had, we put out some publications called The Journal, put out three or four of those. And, uh, Are some still available? Uh, oh, very rare. If you, if you find very them rare. somewhere, they're, they're very valuable. Items, they are. Yeah. Yes, they are vintage. Yes. That's 30 Almost years. 30 yeah, years. it is 30, 30 years. 30 30 years. years. Yes. Year. Do they qualify? Oh, yes, yeah. you do. All right. Monica's going to read a couple um, <laughs> poems from the book, give you a little sneak peek. <laughs> okay, so you ready for something sensual? It's a little oh, yes. sexy here. Not, well, not too much here. But th I forgot to mention this, this book. I don't know what mood I was in when I was picking these poems, but they're just wonderful. But they're a little romantic, some of them, uh, uh, wouldn't you say? I like romance. Well, well, chocolate mm. stimulates that chocolate. chocolate. Yes, I mean, these yes, these are does. poems you would read to your lover. You know, yes. Candles. This book will be a great Valentine's oh, gift. Yeah. Well, oh, definitely. Gift. Or Christmas, yeah. definitely. Coming up, definitely. Coming up before Christmas. Put it in <laughs> with a bottle of wine in your yes, basket, yeah. a little cheese and chocolate yeah. in the book. Right. Take that romantic picnic. Definitely. Yeah. This is uh, by Carol Osterland, and it's called On Sharing Wine. Mm -hmm. You poured the Cabernet. I watched the wine caress the inside curve of glass then waited to be tasted, savored. You offered a piece of chocolate. I felt your fingers beneath the dark, bittersweet. I wished I had fed some to you, but I was lost between bouquet and aftertaste of that first time. Well, lovely. Mm -hmm. oh, I like that wine on the curve of the glass. Yeah, nice. Sounds beautiful. And what's next? I have a piece by Kathy Isaac Luke, and this was a winner of the contest we held, called Riesling. And um, if you want to hear more by Kathy, she's going to oh. be at the Friday night uh, poetry reading mm -hmm. that opens up Gold Rush. That's and right. I'll be reading there. Um, uh, so there'll be four of us, four poets And then reading. I think it opens Ooh. up to reads. And then it opens up to yeah. reads at the end. So public invited, lots of fun. Fantastic. And that's at the McCallamy Library, McCallamy Hill Library. Mm -hmm. She's a wonderful, wonderful poet, one of mm -hmm. my favorites. Oh, yeah. So I'll, let me read one of hers. So beautiful. It's called Riesling. Sometimes... A single glass of aromatic nectar is enough to conjure moments of those days and nights in Heidelberg, everywhere the scent of fresh-cut grass. When sunset burned the Rhine, they walked terraced hillsides, verdant with resplendent vines. 
In evenings, honeyed light would scatter from beveled windows, glint copper on the walls, and dissolve golden in the globes of their wine glasses. Then they toasted clear, dry Riesling, savored notes of apple, peach, rose blossom, and the finish lingers still. Mm. So lovely. Yum, yum. <laughs> She's Sounds gifted. Great. Absolutely she really gifted. Is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very gifted. And I have uh, one by, uh, by me. <laughs> one, I, I don't know what mood I was in. Kathy's husband, Charles, is a, was a wine aficionado. Mm. And he gave me this list of all these words that you can use. So I said, I'm going to try a few of these, make a poem out of it. So this one's called Hazy Words of Wine. <laughs> Complex and oh so smoky, with pale glass tipped slightly, the wine spins in the swirl and press of mahogany, and then your nose dips. As a scientist to his beaker, inhales near the rim and senses roses blossoming deep in the mix, pungent but spicy, robust yet astringent. Lips catch at the rim of balanced, dry, translucent, then plunge into spicy, robust, and hearty, unflawed, elegant red. Our eyes meet briefly and linger, and as we raise glasses again, I wonder, full-bodied, with our reflection pasted to the bottle, if we will pass the taste of time. Oh, lovely. (laughs) I've been wine tasting with that couple. They're fun. (laughs) (laughs) Charles knows his wines. Mm -hmm. He certainly does. Yes, he does. Yeah, so, so I, I read some wine poems. I've got a cheese one. It's a little long. Okay. Let me, you know. I know. This is by Glenn Wasson, the Glenn, humorist. My favorite guy. <laughs> okay. okay, remember this book? Okay. This book. Yeah. 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 So this is, so uh, this is called <laughs> America, the Land of the Bland. <laughs> I can't get Glenn's voice right, but I'll try. It's time we seriously studied cheese. A gourmet snack that one agrees is a familiar taste for one and all, or so t'was said by Charles de Gaulle. (laughs) How could one rule this diverse land? Too many tastes one can't command. 300 cheeses quite unique, like Roquefort, Brie, and Pont Levique. (laughs) Its usefulness, you must admit, a hundred ways to relish it. For apple pie without some cheese is like a kiss without a squeeze. (laughs) On salads, you can use a lotta. Parmesan and dry ricotta. <laughs> You'll need your pounds to make fondue, but just a bit to season stew. Every country has its cheese, Sakura and Takachi Japanese. Australian cheese is Gibson Blue, which ripens in a month or two. In Mexico, you'll spend your pesos to sample hot chili quesos. And in the Alps, you'll be remiss to skip Gruyere and nosh on Swiss. <laughs> in Denmark, they are prone to party by quaffing beer with their Havarti. Of Romanian cheese, few people know they curdle milk of the buffalo. <laughs> How sad it is we seem to lack on gourmet cheese we seldom snack. But manufacture cheese so bland, a blot upon our tasteless land. I urge you all to join with me to correct our palate's apathy. We must permit... We must prevent this gross outrage and permit our Velveeta cheese to age. Oh, <laughs> Glenn <laughs> Spar, <laughs> right? That's good. So, yeah. <laughs> so you get an idea of the variety that is in this book. You're going to be able to laugh or romance someone. Um, it's going to offer you a... Many different evenings, I would gather, mm-hmm. and romantic picnics even in the bathtub. Exactly. Yes. It'll, be, it'll stay right on your coffee table, or you can use it any time. That's right. Or take yeah. it with you wherever you go. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> if you're trying to get that special someone for a date, you never know. Definitely. That yeah. rhymes. I know. <laughs> you can finish the pot. Okay, read on, Monica. We have okay. time for another one. Oh, taste the Heart of Darkness. Ooh, this oh. one takes a different turn. Oh. Some of these in here are so educational. I was le- learning about the origins of chocolate, and mm. very historical, and very nice. This one's by William Keener. In the hall of mountain chocolatiers, I saw the creamy magic, stared down at giant shining paddles dipping in tandem, churning great vats into a molten brown. River flowing beneath me, smooth, raw, liquid chocolate was pouring into itself, forever folding, beating the hot reek of roasted cocoa and sugar into fragrant air. I'm salivating. (laughs) This extravagant supply, the long-sought source of all that was good and warm and sweet and heavy in my 12-year-old world, stirred endlessly, hypnotically, as I leaped the railing, cast myself on the viscous rush to float in ecstasy so thick my milk-skinned body was a boat, sucked up the dark river back to its beginnings. 
up the deep and luscious current of chocolatey mud through a ferment of tropical aromas to forests of cacao flowering in dense steamy ranks, a rain dripping Eden of rich ripening beans. Now I stand in line to buy an ebony bar, tear the paper, tear the foil, hold the treasure on my tongue until the river flows and I swallow darkness slowly once again. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> that, that's fantastic. Oh my goodness. Mm. So you have representation of white chocolate, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, mm -hmm. to all different degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So out there watching us, um, when we come back, Linda's going to share other aspects of the book. Mm -hmm. You are getting an unusual sneak peek into uh, something very special. It's not your average book that you're going to find out there on the shelves. And I think you can tell that already from... Um, the art, the poetry, and you are reading paragraphs from the prose. Yes. So when we come back, Linda Field will give you another experience, and that's kind of what you're getting here from mm -hmm. these three ladies. Yeah. Just a little tease. And you can get the rest of it when you go to the fundraiser and dance all mm -hmm. night, and then you can buy the book in the fall. We'll talk more about that when we come back. Thanks a lot. You're watching your local television network, TSPN. We're TSPN, and now back to authors, writers, books, and beyond. This program also streams live on the web at TSPNTV.com and can be watched on demand at TSPNTV.com or TSPN TV's YouTube channel. And now back to authors, writers, books, and beyond. Hi, welcome back for our fourth and final segment of Authors, Writers, Books, and Beyond. Kathy Boyd Fuller here with Monica and Linda and Connie. And we're, I'm going to turn the show over here to Linda. She's going to read you some paragraphs from the book. Again, you get another little inside peek. And we're going to summarize at the end and give you some websites. So, Linda, take it away. Right. The book Wine, Cheese, and Chocolate is, of course, all about wine, cheese, and chocolate, uh, illustrated with art and photography and poetry and prose. And uh, <clears throat> I had the pleasure and the honor of being a prose editor on the, on the book. And I brought in some portions of what will be what we've chosen for the book. And I'm only going to read short paragraphs because unlike poetry that Monica read, when you hear a poem over and over again, you get more out of it each yeah. time because of the layering of the meaning and everything. But with a story, I don't want to step on their story. I don't want to give away the ending, so yeah. I'm just going to give you teases. Okay. Uh, this first one is called The Entree, and it's by Jan P. Parker. And uh, it was a prize winner, but I'm not going to say which prize it won. I watch a fellow tonight in coolies. His skin sheens, black as a velvet Elvis background, totally silky luscious black. His date wears strapless. Strapless dress, strapless bra, strapless shoes. She probably forgot to strap on her panties, <laughs> unstrapped as she might be feeling. And oh, her dress is red, cherries in the snow red, hot and startling, slam you into the wall kind of red. I fall into the study of this woman's shoulders, where she puts them in motion, how she poses one slanted for shadow effect above her breasts, how she decorates the top of her spine with them in the language of, here I am, come on, how she dips one forward when she laughs at being locked into the what-ifs of her date's ebony eyes. Those eyes daring to look clean through her and make her swoon to the music of his stare and his throaty laughter. I imagine him saying, look at me, girl, kiss me. I press the knuckles of my left hand into my lips, careful and private. Okay, that's a tease for Jan Parker, the entree. <laughs> and, okay, um... Monica was talking about, uh, during the break, about how um, the, our people can learn things from this book, too, you know. And as writers, we often 
we often find that we learn things about ourselves as we write, which I think is a, gosh, you could almost do a show on that. You know, mm -hmm. what, what writers discover about themselves as they write. I think we've done one on that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I must have missed it. Uh, also, um, sometimes writers write to have their character learn something about themselves. And so I've chosen a couple Ooh, that illustrate okay. that. Uh, this one is um, called Who Reads Anymore by Pam Dunn. She's one of our friends. Saturday morning, suffering from a lousy hangover, the last thing William wanted to do was to tour Calaveras County's wine country. Yet he found giving up on the weekend and hitting the freeway traffic that was headed toward San Francisco would be a similarly distasteful venture. After his girlfriend, Carol, plied him with aspirins, a cheese croissant, and a cup of espresso, he thought better of the drive and agreed the fresh air might be good for him. Besides, he angered her the previous evening, and he wanted to make amends. Later that morning, while Carol checked out of the hotel, William tossed their luggage into the trunk and secured the dog pouch containing their chihuahua, Roxy, <laughs> between the Jaguar's bucket seats. And so they're off. Mm -hmm. And William doesn't realize it, but he's going to discover something about himself on this journey, something good. Something to look forward to. Yeah. Oh. The <laughs> next one is by uh, Sonny Lockwood. And Sonny was a... Um, has been a guest on my radio show, uh, Man's in Need of Voices, which I'm going to talk about later. And also, uh, Kathy has been a guest on the yes, show, twice. and Monica a couple times. And actually, Sunny's on the show later in the year. Oh, great, great, great. Yeah, Sunny just came out with a book, too. Uh, so, anyway, I'll be talking about my radio program uh, in a little bit. But this is called Happy New Year by Sunny Lockwood. How pathetic is this? New Year's Eve, and I'm looking at Facebook posts, but don't dare post anything myself. I don't want folks knowing that I'm home alone reading Facebook. Surely everyone else is out having fun, going to the movies or nightclubs or restaurants. How did I end up like this? Boring, bored, and alone? I was popular in high school. I had lots of friends. Where have the years gone? Mine went to an AA degree in dental assisting. A few jobs, a few different apartments, a few boyfriends. And here I am, alone, on New Year's Eve. You know what Dear Abby says about lonely people. She says to go out and do something good for someone else. But I'm the one who needs something good done for them. So, uh, this character goes on to uh, find something good that can be done for her for herself and uh, she learned something and it doesn't quite turn out the way she thought it would mm. and she grows quite a bit interesting okay then uh, this this next person this next character learns something about herself and it's probably not quite so good this is uh, the chocolate kiss by Elaine Faber we quarreled this morning I threw a cup across the room and it shattered on the hearth. I screamed, I hate you, and ran out the door. I kicked the tires on my car. I was angry all morning. Every time the phone rang, I was sure he was going to call to apologize. Why didn't he call? I was too proud to call him all day. The afternoon dragged by. At 5 p.m. I left the office. And now the traffic is terrible and I'm anxious to get home. It's not that I'm sorry. He was wrong, but I'm tired of being mad. I want things to be the same between us again. The cars creep along the freeway, and I check my watch. He should be home by now, waiting for me, listening to music, drinking a glass of wine. I'm sure he brought me flowers, and maybe some chocolate. It has started to rain, and the leaves swirl across the highway, gathering on the edge of my front window. The windshield wipers swish. Hate you, hate you, hate you, mm. they seem to say. My eyes sting with tears. I reach for the cell phone in my purse and, in, and touch instead his gift to me, a chocolate candy 
kiss. I lick the chocolate off my fingers and smile, remembering his words. It signifies my love. Now I yearn to tell him I'm sorry, even if he was wrong. I want his arms around me. I want us to be together. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Buy the book Lovely. and find out what happens. <laughs> By the way, just a little snippet about Elaine. She's a fellow Inspire writer friend of mine, and she just had a book come out. Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says Black Cat, mm -hmm. so you can look her up online. Yes. And she has a signing coming up, too. She had a signing in Sacramento mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago she at did. the animal shelter because yeah. her book is all about cats. It was. I think that was her launch. I missed it. I was out of town, but know, she also has another too. one coming out. Oh, good. So, good. so it should be a fun. Yeah. Fun. Uh, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my website uh, because I, I again was honored and pleased and happy <coughs> for a whole year to host a radio program that was on every week, and it was called Manzanita Voices, and I have a website which, unfortunately, I have not gone near for over a year, but I promise I'm going to uh, renew it again and start blogging and everything. I've just been pretty busy. I've been a foster mom. I've uh, written for Calaveras Enterprise. Um, I was doing work for the press a little bit, and uh, so I kind of got off my kilter a little bit. But anyway, the website does have all of my radio shows archived. They are there, and you could hear my shows with Kathy and Did Monica. Did you, know, you and have like 40 of them or something? 40 at least. Oh, 40, they're 50. fantastic. Yeah, so it's over a year. Manzanitavoices.com. So. Yeah. Look for some new and exciting things from Linda. That's right. She promises. I promise. And I'm getting ready to move, but in the next month, I will start blogging. So that's June, 1st of hold June. Me, hold me to that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right before no the party. Pressure. Right before the party, and you can blog about the party. And yeah. a little reminder before they wind up with their website that there is a weekend um, <sighs> Gold Rush Writers Conference in McCollum Hill at the same hotel, the Hotel Leger, and you can show up at the door. A few of you. There's a few slots left. It's 175 dollars for the second, third, and fourth of May. If you can't make the Picnic dinner on the second goes to the Saturday and Sunday at the hotel. Monica's teaching a class. We've got two classes. In a workshop. Yeah. yeah, and I'm teaching the two-hour children's <laughs> class. Yeah, right. Also, mm -hmm. I have a book signing May 10th at the Antique Gardener Shop in Sutter Creek. <coughs> yeah. So if you can join us there from noon to 5. And Monica, you want to end real quick with the, what you're going to give a website? Oh, manzapress.com? Yes, yes. Yes, manza, w, 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 I can't say those W's. www.manzapress.com. <laughs> M-A-N-Z-A. Manza, for, short for Manzanita, which is our... And so you have Manzanita. gotten a real good taste here today of what the press offers through Connie's sharing. You're the publicity person, correct? Yes, she, she is. She's our marketing director. She's our right. and designer. Uh, designer. And she, she has designer. more coming up for you in the course of this year and next year, too. And as we wind down and say goodbye, thank you all for coming. We're going next door for dinner. Join us next month. It's a family generation of readers. Uh, you'll find that quite yeah. interesting, something we haven't done here before. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining Bye. us. Bye. You're watching your local television network, TSPN.